fucking most amazing thing. So when I saw this and I realized my own personal history and my journey and where I'm at now, uh, everybody, a lot of my circle are like, why are you not an AEW? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Because I have a responsibility from the things I've learned from you to carry this message to another place where kids do not have this type of leadership because the message is shut down by the government. So I have a radio show. International. I'm in 42 countries. Every day, Monday to Friday. And then on the weekends I have another radio show where I support local indie talent. And I don't give a fuck. I put them on the radio. There's nobody touches me. I do what I want to do. And I give these kids the opportunity to be heard. My only request is make sure you have something to say. Don't waste my time. I'm not fucking around here taking on the world and putting myself in the line of fire for you to come up here and fake ass gangster your shit. If you're not gonna change somebody's life for the better, don't come around me. Yeah. Yeah. So, I have this, and this is the last part of my, th I think, and then if you'd like to ask, if you wanna, okay. So, I have that, and then I have TV shows. I have three right now, one's a paranormal show, where I expose fake fucking ghost hunting and I tell the truth about spirituality like I just did. Whoa, that's whoa. deep. I'm and I teach people how to cook, pray, meditate. One of my teachers, I got two teachers, Mitch Horowitz, if you ever heard of him, he's yeah. a bad motherfucker. And my other guy, Damian Eccles, um, who's one of the West Memphis Three, uh, is one of my teachers in magic and I'm telling you, he's a deep dude. Um, so I have these platforms and I'm insisting on taking on the system. And the system to me is the corrupt system of the lack of opportunities to be educated in reality, which is you are able to have a great quality of life because it's free. It's yours. It's the law of the universe. And, and I, 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 won't, I can't sell out. I can't. Because I will let you down. And I'm not able to do that. I, I love you. And the sacrifices you make in your life to be a juggalo affords a nobody like me the opportunity to get my message out there. I am so grateful, I am so humbly grateful to each and every one of you to do what you do every single day when you buy your fucking hair dye, when you save up your money for the new t-shirts, when you get the bootlegs, when you go to the events, when you fucking have to get the tattoos, and then you gotta go to work, and then you gotta fucking explain yourself, and then you gotta defend yourself. That is a very fucking horrible thing that you have to go through but you do it with ease because it's who you are and because of who you are i can't fail that message i can't i can't i'm so good thank you for what you do thank you and, and, and to finish i'm a guardian angel i don't know if you know what the guardian angels are we started in new york city in the 70s taking on crime unarmed, unsupported by the police or the government. We just went to the streets, uniformed, red berets, to help for free. I've been doing it for 22 years. I'm, I'm the chapter leader. I'm the international liaison based out of Mexico. I brought the program down there, and what I did was I went to the, all the prisons, I talked to all the cartel leaders, and I said, this is what I'm doing. I'm working with the police, I'm working with the government, I'm working with your kids. Don't stop selling drugs, do what the fuck you're gonna do. But don't touch my people, because I'm only here to help your parents, your family that you left behind because of this drug war. I'm only trying to do the right thing. So right now, I never really talk about it, but I'm a third degree black belt, military level, Israeli trained, Krav Maga, ninja. No doubt about it, I will fuck you up. Well, I, before. Um, and I'm a police instructor in Mexico. The most dangerous fucking job you can think of. The cartel tells me every day, stop teaching those motherfuckers. But I can't. I can't. Because they're not bad people. They're human beings who have kids and families to support. And they're just like you and me. They're just trying to get by. And if I got something to give, and I got that from you, I'll stand up in the face of evil any fucking day and not take a step backwards. So my friends, my brothers, my sisters, my family, thank you for letting me take your time and I hope you got something out of this. 
And it was a blessing for me to be here with you. Thank you. Did you enjoy that? Yeah. You got any, anybody want to ask me anything? Yeah, we're going to take your question right over here. We'll start with this guy. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, Dr. Grubbs, Marie Popward, long story with that. But anyway, a question that I ask everybody. If you could have a meal with three people, one dead, one alive, and one fiction, who would they be? If I could do what? Have a meal with three people. Have a meal? With three people, one dead, one alive, and one fictional. All together or one by one? Jesus? That's it. I'd only have a meal with Jesus so I can learn something to share. That's the only reason. He's the king. That's it. Alright, we're going to go right over here. But that's a fucked up question. Because is Jesus dead or is he alive? It changes the answer, doesn't it? It's only Jesus. Vampiro. What? Do you have some favorite uh, wrestling uh, traveling buddies and some funny road stories to tell? Mm, kind of, well, I, no, I don't really. The only I've never really traveled with anybody ever. Um, I'm kind of weird. I'm a lone wolf kind of guy, you know. I'm, I'm, and because of my PTSD, I get freaked. I, I have a really hard time. This is another reason why I'm doing these spoken word things, because for my mental health, I'm forcing myself to be more sociable. I'm sick and tired of being this antisocial guy. I want to enjoy life, and I like people. So this is why I do this. But So I, I, I didn't have the, the, the courage to admit that before. So I was unable to travel with anybody, and I wish I did. I probably would have been a better person for it. Um, funny stories about wrestling? Fuck, I don't know, of course I do. I mean, what, what these two idiots? Joe and Joey? Or with, with who? I mean, fuck, of course I do. I mean, one with Marty the Moth. You know Marty the Moth from um, Blue Chunder Yeah, we were, we were in Mexico with me, him, Johnny Mundo, and two other dudes. And, and I was like, look, they're, they're, we're on a highway at night. And I was like, this is bad. And because the traffic had stopped. And, and Marty was like, well, there's a gas station, you're gonna get up and go bust. I said, Marty, stay in the fucking car and put your head down. Turn the lights on, you're an American. Why, why, why? And all we saw in the darkness was 10 guys, masks, with the, with the AKs coming up. In, in combat stance, military. And I was like, that's not military. Don't say a fucking thing. And I waited till they got there and they saw it was Vampiro. And, and they pulled me out of the car and they were there. They're a cartel. What they do is they see big SUVs and they, they kill everybody, they take the SUVs because they go into the next town and they use those to block the streets so they have a gunfight. That's a wrestling story. <laughs> <laughs> and I have it every day. So why do you shit his pants in the car? That's the end of the story. Here you go, right, right here. First off, Vampiro, thank you for that speech. I've been at a dark place in my life. I think it just brought me a little bit out. I, can you turn that, the, um, that mic up? Because either I'm deaf or uh, I don't know what's going on. Hey, I know you're all in love over there, but pay attention. So, right? I just want to say thank you for that speech. I've been at a dark place in my life. You kind of just brought me out of it a little bit inch by inch. That being said, one wrestling question. As someone who's had their face plastered on every one every country you can imagine and on everything imaginable what's your favorite thing you've had like your face plastered on and what's one thing you want to license i'm so against all of that i'd rather leave an impression 
on somebody's decision they make to go ahead in their life instead of having something like that. I'm not. I was never into the fame thing uh, or the. I I did all that stuff. I got a whole new line of action figures coming out. I mean, two new video games, and I don't even know what they're called. I know they're out right now. I know one video game's out right now. It's kind of a Call of Duty thing, and you can play Vampiro. The other one, I uh, I don't even know. And my dolls, I don't know when they're coming out. Uh, but I would rather say something or do something that influences you instead of having my face on something. I like that. That was good. Uh, All right. Uh, good morning, Mr. Uh I've got a 90 degree bend in my spine, and I've got neural problem, and I have a 45 pound tumor to cause my stomach. Plus, I've got a intestine and a hernia and also surgery. So, I've had, spent a lot of time in, in my bed and stuff in my life. Oh, man, dude, I, I'm sorry. I was talking to him. I, I thought that was feedback. I can't yeah. hear this motherfucker, man. Turn well, this up. Yeah, I don't know if he needs a monitor, Will. I don't... I, no, I, I just, I, I, I apologize, man. I'm sorry. Trying, what were you saying, to... brother? I said, I've got a 90 degree bend in my spine, and I've got neurofibroma, and I've got a, I have had a 45 pound tumor to on my stomach that was the size of a pizza. Also, I had a put of intestine to come out and also a hernia. I lived in Colorado for 10 years, and I got robbed and sent back to Tennessee for two years. And now I'm at the gathering that took us talking to you. I absorb knowledge like a freaking sponge. One of the dudes I love is Henry Rollins, and he taught me to travel. Go everywhere. I lived in neighborhoods where there's machine gun fire and people hit the deck and I would have gotten flinched and they're like, you're a cold motherfucker. My question to you is, if you could go to the uh, library in Alexandria, what piece of knowledge would you bring back? That has to be the greatest question ever. Do you all know what the library in Alexandria supposedly was? That they just moved to the basement of the Vatican, but we don't know that yet? Yeah! Yeah! Um, oh, man! <laughs> yeah. I saw it. There's another story, though. Some of it, anyways. Um, that question that he just asked, and that's a great question for anybody who's interested in magic. What piece of knowledge? I believe if you study with somebody who's a magician, or they give you a message, or you read something. It's just like self-defense. If you go to a self-defense teacher, and that's the baddest motherfucker in the planet, run away very fast. It's just like with magic. I'm the greatest magician of all time. Hang up the phone. Because the universe, if the universe is 17 billion years old, or 13.5, or whatever, um, do you really think somebody knows everything? Do you really think that anybody's opinion means... The way the universe works, the way magic works, is we're all frequencies, right? Big radio. That's why there's the dial, you hear this static, 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 until you connect with something, because your frequency is on the same frequency. So your, 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 your answer to that question is, what piece of knowledge? I would say go to the library and don't leave go and learn and study and then share that knowledge that's what i would bring back because if you had any idea how amazingly easy it is to access all these things it's, it's incredible that's what i would say i would say learn the truth i mean if you the, the greatest example is the bible the bible that people use in church right now that was written 800 900 a thousand years after jesus had died there were no tape recorders there was no youtube there were no witnesses. The Gnostic Bible is the only document, supposedly, that Jesus spoke to somebody. It's an eyewitness account. So if you start to look at history and religions like that, and you understand there has to be more. Why are we not learning these things? Why am I, if I work eight hours a day, and then one hour before that, and one hour, two hours after that, to get home, come home, eat, fuck around, deal with my life, I have six hours left in the day, eight hours, seven hours. So three of that is in my relationship, another hour and a half is cleaning up, preparing for tomorrow, and then eating and all that. So I'm left with an hour and a half, two hours. And that two hours, I'm gonna waste my time fucking up my life? Or can I dedicate that to studying to become a better version of myself? That's the knowledge I would try to bring back.